framework of the Jewish history. And now we'll move on to our last lecture in this session, Dr. Michal ben Yaakov, who taught in the Efrata College before her retirement, served as the head of the Department of History, and was among the founders of the historic MA program, and is currently a Spiegler Fellow in the Pinkler Institute for the Holocaust Research in the Habariland University which has been researchers North Africa in the mid 20th century, focuses on immigration to Israel in women and in the course of the Second World War in the encounter be between American, European and Moroccan Jews and Helen Kazez Ben Attar's activity is at its center. She published many articles in these topics and I think was among the first researchers that dealt with the figure of Ben Attar and we have a mutual history from the beginning of our research path here. I thank you for coming, please. Thank you, Professor Chaim Sadon, for the invitation to participate in such an important conference. Ildad Siyon from the Center for the Decommendation of the North African Jewry in the Second World War and for all the organization and the care for all the details, the interpreters and all the others. It's problematic to be the third among three speakers who refer to the same figure. Now, you may Notice that the biographical review of Helen Bellatar's life perhaps is a bit lacking, and I'll try to fill in the details. For over 40 years, I have been dealing in research about Helen Kazat Benatar in one way or another, starting from my MA a year after her passing in 1979 until today. Everything began. Everything began with the examination of dozens of cardboard boxes full of lists and folders which depict her activity in the years of the war and for the benefit of Jewish as well as non-Jewish remarkably refugees that escaped from burning Europe and found a temporary asylum in Morocco in the 20s. The collection that was found in the archive was deposited there two years before her passing. Since there, I was enchanted by her activity and bravery. How could a woman who is act could be active in such a masculine field, did she break through path? as the title of the conference, or did she stretch the boundaries that are accepted in society in order to enable her own unique activity? How did she make use of professional and social networks local as well as internationally in favor in benefit of the refugees? And how did she create new network did her strategy do do her strategies have gender aspects pertaining to her female gender in recent times I have been examining her ties with the broader Jewish world, Zionist and non Zionist, some of them in an interaction between Moroccan and European Jews, as Professor Frankel noted, but also with American Jews. In fact, through her, via her activity, and thanks to her, the American Jew in Uri began finding interest in assisting and intervening with the Jewish communities in North Africa in the course of the war. And after that, and developing the means of communication before, between the different groups. And this conference in commemoration of the International Holocaust Day dedicated to Helen Kazbenatar 
will focus in her official activity in the 40s and that is well because she is worthy of a broad recognition finally for her action and for deep appreciation. However, in this lecture, I would like to expand the sheet and to focus these five years of activity in a broader context of her long and full life and her intriguing persona, as we've heard now from Professor Rafi Israeli and Zizer Meller. And also, I would like to focus on the developments in the research and public awareness that Professor Frankel and Sa Professor Sadon have referred to. I will begin with several comments and questions pertaining to my respected colleagues' previous lectures. First, why now? In my lectures up until today, I always concluded with information about how for, how come Helen Benatar is has been forgotten and is non-existent in the documentation about the whole Holocaust, in the documentation about the North Moroccan Jews, and neither in the documentation about the Casablanca community. Now the reverse question: Why now? Why? Is she now in the spotlight? Now, indeed, there are several things that, in my opinion, come together. First of all, is the accessibility of the archives. Her own private archive, it was noted, in Jerusalem is already organized. The catalog is accessible online. And the materials have been photographed years ago and are accessible in the Washington Holocaust Museum in the US. So there's greater exposure to this mere decommendation, but this is not all. Her activity in the course of some 15 years uh, with fluctuations, in the joint and the American Jewish Joint Distribution Community. There, too, most of the material has been scanned and is online, and everyone could look at it in slippers. Now, in addition, once we have a bit from there and a bit from there, others, as Professor Millen, others could, other material could be found in different archives. So it seems that the materials about her is consolidating, and historians indeed are in need of records in order to write. Now, if there is a lot more uh, material that has yet to have been exposed in the archives of the Quake Organization, for example, in Philadelphia, the archives of the American Friends Service Committee, with whom she collaborated tight, tightly. And there's a lot of material there. Some of it was scanned and is available in Washington. But actually, the interesting material is found in the employees' personal files, which have not been scanned as yet. So we have yet to complement, and still the mystery is greater than the revealed. <clears throat> Simultaneously with the consolidating documentation, there is a growing division of North African Jewry research, and dozens and hundreds of articles are published on a yearly basis. About the Jews in North Africa in the years of the war, there has been a flourishing of studies in recent years. Books the like as the book of Professor Vicente Salman about the Jews in North Africa and the Middle East, the Susan Miller's books, Rafi Israeli's book, articles published by Omar Berlingum and Sarah. Stein and an important uh, file that was published by Chaim Sa Sadon and Dun, uh, Professor Don Leisler, who pu which published a first volume about the Jew North African Jews in the course of the Second World War that w took place in this conference hall in 2008 and more and more. And of course, I could not have brought uh, photographs of t dozens and hundreds of articles. Now, new questions and thought directions lead to new insights. 
trends in the developing research and sh and shifts in public awareness, influence, influence, and also bring Helen Benatar to the a prominent place on the stage. A gender study. <clears throat> Gender studies, the place of women in society and their activity and the relationships between men and women, opens a window for the examination of Benatar's uh, activity and pushes her once again to the front of the stage in research, in social media. Uh, questions are raised regarding her work strategies versus or with the masculine systems that led international aid organization and international leadership, whether in Morocco or later on in Paris, to which she moved the study of the North African Jews in general and specifically in the course of the Second World War receives prominence not only in the research but also in public awareness. And I think that was noted by the CEO of Yad Benzvi. And that is the recognition and appreciation A third and new top, relatively new topic in public awareness is the appreciation and recognition of Jews who had saved other Jews in the course of the Holocaust. In addition to the official recognition in the righteousness among the people who are not Jews on behalf of on the Holocaust Commemoration Day in 2020, Helen Benatar won the uh, won appreciation for her work on, for saving Jews in the course of the Holocaust. That prize is bestowed upon Jews as of 2011. And what are the question, Helen, uh, of whether Helen uh, Benatar was a savior or an aid? She truly deserves that recognition and appreciation both. And hence, when speaking with Dr. Avran Huli, he told me that his proposition was uh, endorsed almost immediately. Allow me to be cynical without even distinguishing between her great contribution and assistance. But my question is whether the quick endorsement was since she is a woman, because now it is politically co correct to have women representatives in every list. Is it because of her Moroccan origin? because here too it addresses the political correctness needs in the present-day political atmosphere. At any rate, it is appropriate that the recognition was given. Now, I will continue regarding what we've heard. These things present a rich and complicated picture about Benatar and her personality. But what do we know about her, her personality, the women, Helen or Nellie and Miller uh, referred to that as well, the riddles and questions abound. She preserved her privacy and did not reveal herself. She was not looking, neither receiving headings, uh, but surely she was disappointed that she did not receive recognition. She actively and intensively act behind the stage to find new solutions and break new paths to maneuver <clears throat> as a lawyer, as a social worker in a bureaucratic world with a meticulous care for every detail about the regulations of the time and, ex and exploiting the gaps between these regulations together with the flexibility to change direction alongside with the fluctuating reality. <clears throat> boldness and sensitivity, although I must say that these two words uh, have a different meaning in the 
present political atmosphere with a clear moral compass, profound sensitivity to human suffering and injustice. Thus, while with a true internalization of the fact that all Israel, our friends, don't are guarantee each other, we can draw information about her own personality. Quote, I had the pleasure of meeting a da Dan Ben Attar wrote Sonia Levine, an American employee in North Africa on behalf of the Hadassah uh, Zionist Women's Organization that served in the North African Women another organization that was established in 1943 in North Africa. In the letter to the Joint in 1944, she continued, she is an amazing woman. She is short of statures, uh, chubby, and vibrant with sparkling black eyes. We saw her working with refugees heedlessly from early morning to 10 or even at night or even midnight, and I skipped. However, although she's a lawyer, a successful lawyer in her profession, in reality, she serves as a very human and understanding social worker. The profoundness of her interest, her honesty, and integrity are evident in everything she does. And she concludes, getting to know her was a true privilege. Dr. Yosef Schwartz, Joe, who was already mentioned uh, directly on behalf of the European branch of the joint, knew how to appreciate her contribution and uh, competencies in the course of years and was an enthusiastic supporter. And I'm expecting to read Tuvia Freling's book, who already mentioned was mentioned by Chaim Sadon about her activity in the joint. And from interviews preceding the publication of the book, he wrote quite a bit about Benatar as well. In February 1943, two years after Benatar contacted the joint, Schwar wrote about his visit, his first visit to North Africa, and I quote, this report would not have been complete without recognizing the blessed and successful activity of our refugee committee. We won't talk now about the frictions between Benatar and the joint. We'll leave that. Headed by Mrs. Benatar, she is a very um, vibrant woman with developed and sophisticated leadership competencies. Despite the fact that she's among the first in of the lawyers in Morocco, she dedicates most of her time to the refugee problem. And we should note here as a side comment with the entrance of issue, her license, like other Jewish advocates' licenses were confiscated and abo um, aborted. Everything she does, she does in an admirable manner. The regimes of France and Great Britain and the U.S. appreciate her greatly. And likewise does the local Jewish community. His work dedicated, vibrant, and very with legal uh, leadership capabilities are tri translated to vigorous and meticulous with a temperament. It was not always easy to work with her. Eric Johnson, who worked with her on behalf of the Quakers organization that I've already mentioned in 1943 and 44, was a good friend and he believed in Benatar and said she does have disadvantages, but she gets a lot done. 
and I am willing for her to exaggerate or cry out from time to time. Now, in this field, I recommend Susan Miller's book, Years of Glory, in which there are intriguing depictions of Helen Bellatar's meetings with various people, although I, I beg to differ with some of her conclusions. In the aid committee to foreign refugees, which she had established in Casablanca, she was the decisive decision maker. It was a one man, one woman committee, and she had helpers with the establishment of other aid organizations in North America for whom Minotaur served as liaison, although she uh, also the joint, although she did not directly work for them, she was not always willing to take uh, subjugate to the authority of American men who came for the first time to North America. Eventually, Helen Benatar and joint parted away several times, but she was recalled time and again because of her acquaintance with the field, with the needs, and with her communication abilities in several languages. Approximately a decade ago, I benefited from a long conversation with her uh, son-in-law, Dr. Serge Lapidot, who married her daughter, Miriam, who had passed away in the Parisian suburbs. And later on, we corresponded in writing until his passing a year and a half ago. Indeed, he was he was not acquainted uh, from Ma'am, but in, he, he was acquainted with her only from the end of the 40s, but he wrote a biography of her and described her disappointments, his activity. The grandchild today continues uh, to correspond with me, and he has his own insight, and those um, put flesh on the skeleton that is documented, a meticulous and diligent, uh, strong temperamental women with principles and inner motivation. She gave up a normative li a family life on caring daily for her children, and she rarely exposed the love that she had, even towards her family members. The interesting thing is that I rarely read or heard from the thousands of refugees she had assisted, and I read dozens and dozens of testimonies of European uh, intellectual Jews who were in Morocco, who lived in Morocco, and in every such standing, I call out and I ask you, if anyone knows of these refugees, I will be happy to learn about that. And that is why it is hard to hear Helen Kazaz Benatar's voice, and we must settle with the reflection of her personality through the documents and the few memoirs and writings of others. I would like to raise several main themes in her activity. Some of these themes connect directly to the second session in this conference. And I'm certain that these lectures will reveal new information. The first I already mentioned, the gender perception regarding her status as a woman in a conservative society. Likewise, her status as a widow, which she was most of her life, and I will not have time to touch upon that. Thirdly, her perceptions and social status in the Jewish expanding bourgeois class in Casablanca. Uh, third, her, sorry, her inter involvement in professional and organizational sectors, her care, her pursuit of justice and individual rights, her perceptions regarding the personal responsibility to what goes on in the society, and lastly, her Zionist activity and perceptions. Helen Kazaz Benatar did not just 
fall from the sky into her activity in assistance of refugees upon their arrival to Casablanca. And neither did she evaporate or disappear after the war. As it turns out, the collection that she deposited in the archive reveals only part of her activity in the course of the years. Her broad activity after the war, before she was not yet publicized or reviewed or studied. Likewise, the roots of her activity before the war. And I am waiting anxiously to hear from the other speakers, especially from Professor Shikri and uh, Vigaj in the second session. In the uh, little time that I have left, I would like to bring an example from one field alone about Zionism, immigration, and support in the State of Israel. In the first folder in the archive, there are are two invitations to lectures that she gave on behalf of Vizzo in the 1930s about women in the state of Israel. Where do I have that? From her biography, we learned that she was among the founders and the president of the Vizzo branch in Casablanca in Morocco. And from the Zionist archive, we can see one letter, one letter of hers. We're still missing another letter with information about this activity in the 30s. I'll just skip a bit. Of course, she contributed to the JN, donated to the JNF, and it is mentioned. These donations are mentioned in the local journalism professor Yaron Tour in his groundbreaking book about the Moroccan Jewish community in 1944-1945 defined Benatar as one of the most prominent personalities in the reformist Jewish pro-Zionist gap in Morocco. And we should examine her whole scope of activity at the backdrop of this ideological and cultural aspect. And of course, we will hear about that via Vito. She contacted women like herself in France and in England. Okay, I'll skip a while. The few that we, a few, few information that we found about the list of members in Vito in 1935-37, when the refugees arrived in Morocco through Marseille or Lisbon and North Africa, and arrived in Casablanca, it was no surprise. She was prepared. She was aware of the problem, and she was called to address and find a solution to the refugee problem. With the outbreak of the war, most of the Zionist activity was halted but was not forgotten. After the war, the national spirit and nationalistic spirit grew against the French uh, colonialistic rule. News from Israel and the founding of the State of Israel added to, to the tensions and instability in the state of the Jews in Morocco. <clears throat> with the solution of the refugee situation in North Africa and the establishment of the treatment of the refugee problem in Europe, where Helen was also involved, Helen turned to other fields of activity. Following the June 1945 riots in which and Rashad Benatar traveled there and thought ways to help. The murders and casualties and the impairment of economic ties and political stability invoked uh, Benatar for uh, additional activity and she called Jews to leave their homeland, to immigrate to Israel rather than to stay and remain according to the All Israel Friends ideology. And I'll skip uh, the comments. While this non-characteristic picture appears oftentimes, she worked and established the, her purposes and the purpose of the joint, and she forged collaboration with health uh, employee uh, workers, with educational workers, and more, etc. I'll just skip a bit about the frictions with the delegates. If there are questions later, delegates that came from Israel. 
She became a spokesperson of the North African Jews in international conferences. So she appears. Indeed, there are other women that appear in these events, but in other roles, she continued writing that her reports began appearing in the American Jewish press. And here you can see based on her reports, based on her encounter in Paris, that where they surprised the American delegates that almost knew nothing about the North African Jews in collaboration with the Jewish agency the role distribution for the immigration of the north of the North African Jewry and most prominent in activity is her activity in Tripoli in 1948 1949 when she came to Libya also after riots that raged there in 1948 and in an accelerated uh, raid began organizing immigration to Israel while uh, uh, turning to and inviting the head of the community there in Tripoli. At the end, thanks to vast efforts, they did find means and ways to address and treat the elderly and the children who immigrated to Israel. This I found in a Zionist uh, newspaper in Hebrew and Italian in the Zionist archive. In the joint archives where I expected to find material only now in recent months, um, the first materials about Tripoli were uploaded. And I asked myself, how could it be that the joint finance, a whole home, and there's no documentation? Now we're beginning to see this information there. They they were concealed within the 60s divisions, and now they're uploading this information to the joint website. And I, I worked, uh, I did uh, quite a detective work also in the archives in New York. In the course of the war, she met for the first time Jews in the Atlas Mountains, in the remote villages where she went to meet and visit prisoners in the labor camps. That's a different story. And in fact, she was the one who gave the joint the idea that it is indeed high time in light of the tensions and instability to close down the villages in the Atlas Mountains. Later on, the joint accepted and endorsed her suggestion, and she was active also in this respect. In 1951-1952, her path was separated from the joint's path, and she moved on to take upon herself a senior role in the United Jewish Appeal in the U.S. She was presented as a, the hero and savior of refugees, but actually she came to talk about the situation of Jews in North Africa and in Israel. Here, in this case, too, the competition is still buried in a warehouse in in the Federation's warehouses in Brooklyn because there's, they don't have enough man manpower and other excuses. In the archive here, there are only two notices about her lectures. I reviewed Jewish newspapers only in an attempt to track her lectures, and I found some newspaper from Baltimore, and I found found just a few. And we can see here the close connection with the state of Israel. I'll briefly go on and skip it. I see that Haim is a bit pressed for time, so we'll reach the conclusion by calling all of Israel uh, guarantee each other as a young woman who uh, found a place in the Jewish philanthropic activity as daughter of a respected uh, family and whose husband was part of the Casablanca elite. 
things were manifested. The years of the war perhaps were the peak of her activity, but they were not the only years of her activity. Through her activity for the benefit of immigration and the state of Israel, we can close the circle and see her activity not only for the welfare of the individual, but also for human rights. For this purpose, she made path for non unconventional collaboration, interorganizational and interpersonal collaborations. I claim that she was highly successful in her role, not only thanks to her organizational abilities, but also thanks to the experience she gained in the course of her activity for the benefit of refugees in the course of the war. Her ability to maneuver between personalities, organizations, regime, to forge collaboration despite disputes, and above all, thanks to her dedication, uh, vigorous energy, and commitment, the advantages, uh, disadvantages, of course, norm are uh, usually characterized leading women in the field of philanthropy and help for the others. Many women are active, but Benatar is exceptional in the scope of her activity among the higher echelons of, of the regime with whom she collaborated and the organization she worked with. She was dedicated wholeheartedly to the mission. She worked tirelessly. Doubtless, she was a confident woman, efficient and true to her goals almost at any cost. She did her complicated work often behind the scenes but she did not push herself forward. It seems that her public activity for the benefit of the Jewish people as of the 40s and 50s fulfilled her life at the cost of her professional work and private life. In order to realize her goals, she used her ties as an advocate, she exploited her social status, and she counted on her father's and husband's status in order to obtain collaboration from the leaders of the Jewish committee. Her individual status as a widow also enabled her of freedom of activity in the conservative community. Um, society, as well as in the modern society. However, despite the huge scope of her work, in the eyes of the joint, she remained a woman, a local woman, not her the official representative of the organization. How Kazaz Benatar realized in her life the statement, all the Jews guarantee one another. Her Western perspective opened communication with the Jewry of the United United States. Her status in society enabled her to contact leaders in Morocco and other North African states. Was she Zionistic? Depending on the definition of Zionism, she indeed acted for the immigration to the state of Israel. Her warm and caring heart and her profound care for the other tied her to those with a bitter destiny. On July 7, 1979, at the age of 80, Helen Kazaz Benatar passed away in Paris. As it is written on her tombstone in the Jewish cemetery in Paris, she was a legendary woman that comforted so many in distress. Despite uh, the hardships as a woman in general, her profound care for the other tied her the story with the destinies of many other Jews and non-Jews and motivated to act beyond the bound, um, accepted boundaries of gender. And thus, she serves as a model for the realization of the motto, all of Israel guarantee one another for women and men together. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Michal ben Yaakov, for the perspective that she opened for us and uh, um, transferred us into the non the last fascinating one we had right now. Thank you so much.